<clears throat> Hello everyone, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh from uh, Palestine, Gaza. Uh, this is Rifat uh, Larir. Uh, I teach at the Islamic University uh, of Gaza. Uh, this is Shakespeare, our fascinating uh, course. Uh, We've been doing these online uh, sessions because of the anti-corona uh, procedures the whole world is taking. So please uh, stay safe, try to stay at home as much as you can. And uh, most importantly, try to keep uh, uh, clean as much as you can when you touch a uh, thing, especially if you go out. Again, don't go out. Uh, last time we discussed, uh, we started discussing Hamlet's uh, scene uh, one, act five. We've seen how Shakespeare was developing and pushing this fascinating uh, play into its, its ending. Uh, in act five, scene one, we have uh, a new Hamlet. Hamlet was confident, Hamlet was different after his journey to, to England, after his journey actually uh, to death. Uh, there were several holes, some of you commented on, uh, on them, especially the deal Hamlet uh, had with the pirates whom he called the thieves of, of mercy, what kind of deal and how uh, and why they showed up, we're not sure about this. Probably this is not important to, to Shakespeare. Probably Shakespeare wants to leave us uh, with many uh, gaps so we can keep thinking about this. And this is why, one reason actually why Hamlet is fascinating. It keeps giving, there are no answers to any of the questions. Each and every single answer requires a debate that doesn't, uh, doesn't end. Uh, today we'll continue our discussion, uh, act, uh, act five, scene, uh, scene one. And again, I call these uh, uh, online sessions Shakespeare in the time of, uh, of Corona. Not sure if you know, if you know uh, the novel Love in the Time of Cholera by uh, Marquez, if I'm pronouncing the, na the name correctly. So uh, we, uh, we, we discussed many issues in, in scene one again, at the encounter, the, 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 the very important uh, comic relief uh, we had between the death of Ophelia and the deaths that are going to come. We've seen how uh, these people are talking, these grave diggers, uh, we, we discussed the language, the prose language. Uh, today we'll see how Hamlet uh, interacts with them. We saw part of that and how one of the grave diggers was using, the first grave digger was using Hamlet's technique and punning and playing with Hamlet. And uh, today we'll continue this and see Hamlet holding the skull and uh, doing his fascinating prose speech. I knew him, Horatio. We'll talk about Ophelia's death again, suicide, and political corruption and religious corruption. We'll talk about Laertes' love of, for, her, uh, for his brother. I will talk about the fascinating scene, the highly intense, intensely dramatic scene where Hamlet and Laertes fight inside Ophelia's grave. I'm not sure how disgusting this is, but this is what happens. And then we'll Hamlet's love for Ophelia and Ophelia's love uh, for Hamlet. Okay, so one of you said uh, she wants to recite this. Uh, Maram, you can go on, Maram. Okay, can go. you hear me? Yeah, yes, go on. Let me see. Alas, poor Yurik, I knew him, Horatio a fellow of infinite jest, of most excellent fancy. He hath borne me on his back a thousand times, and now how abhorred in my imagination it is. My gorge rises at it. He hung those lips that I have kissed, I know not how oft. Where be your jibes now, your gambles, your songs, your flashes of merriment that were wont to sit the table on our oar? Not one now, to mock your own grinning, quite a chip fallen. Now, get you to my lady's chamber, and let her, let her paint an inch thick. To this favor she must come, make her laugh at that. Wow, fascinating, excellent. Um, one of the boys, one of the guys, anybody? Thank you very much, Maram. This is a fascinating recitation. 
Somebody gone. Who else wants to recite this? Mm -hmm. Type. So this is uh, the scene where Hamid holds the skull. Probably I mentioned this before. There is a famous uh, misconception here. People usually think that uh, Hamlet was uh, doing his famous to be or not to be speech while he was holding the, the skull. It's not here. Uh, and I gave you an exercise to go and Google image uh, Hamlet and see how many times uh, you have the image of Hamlet holding the skull. So this, I'll, I'll go through the speech. I'll read it first. Alas, poor you. This is again very famous. Many people play on this. Alas, poor you. I knew him, Horatio. I have heard this so many, many, many times. I knew him, Horatio. Alas, poor Yorick, I knew him, Horatio. A fellow of infinite jest, of most excellent fancy. He has borne me on his a thousand times. And now, how abhorred in my imagination. It is my gorge rises at it. Here hung those lips that I have kissed. I know not how oft. Where be your jibes now, your gambols, your songs, your flashes of merriment that were wont to set the table on a roar? Not one now, to mock your own grinning, quiet chap fallen. Now get you to my lady's chamber and tell her, let her paint an inch thick. To this favor she must come. Make her laugh at that. Wow. The, again, Hamlet coming face to face with death, actually literally holding a, uh, a skull. And this reveals a lot about Hamid. Look at this, this is prose first and foremost. And look at again how he wants to engage Horatio all the time. There's no need here for, uh, uh, for soliloquies. Horatio is there, he talks to him directly, and he talks to us as well. He describes Yorick, he's the king's just, uh, just uh, the king's just, uh, just uh, and the king's fool entertainer, but he was Hamlet's childhood uh, companion. A fellow of infinite, just of most excellent fancy imagination. He had borne me on his back a thousand times. He carried me, you know, piggy bag on, 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 his, on his back a thousand times. And now, now imagining this person is dead, holding the skull, how abhorred this makes me. My gorge rises. I want to throw up. I want to vomit. Here, and he touches this the, near the, the lips where they were supposed to be, they're supposed to be. Here hung those lips that I have kissed, I know not how oft. Where be your jibes now? Where are your jokes, your gambles, your movements, your merriments, your songs, your flashes of merriment that were wont to sit the table abroad? Everybody would be cracking at your jokes. Not one, not, not, not one now to mock your own grinning. And if you look at this, uh, the thing about grinning here, there, because literally the skull is grinning, but this is not a, 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 a normal grinning. Quite the chap falling. Now get you to my lady's chamber and tell her, let her paint an inch thick. I don't know exactly why he's talking about the lady and the woman here, like and how women would be painting and making up and not paying it just, uh, I'm um, interested more in, in their appearance rather than in, in their essence. I'm not sure why he brings this. We've seen that Hamlet can be anti-feminist, mis misogynistic sometimes. Uh, we can look uh, into, you can look into this in more, in more detail because you will eventually come to this. You will be a skull. You will be a heap of, of, uh, of bones and a skull. Make her laugh at that. Remember this. So, uh, uh, we, like we said, uh, Yurik is a man of infinite jokes, but now has turned into a pile of jokes. We spoke earlier about Alexander and uh, Julius uh, Caesar, how even these great, great people will eventually turn into, into bones. Uh, and, and, and we spoke last class how this is probably one of the most, if not the most iconic scene in all of literature. But again, don't forget that this is not that when, that when Hamlet uh, uh, gave his to be or not to be soliloquy. So Hamlet recalls Yorick's frivolity, vitality, and energy to emphasize that the nothingness he has become. He can not laugh. He cannot talk. He cannot defend himself. He can no longer crack jokes. As he handles the skull, Hamlet sees uh, everything in a wider perspective. He has, appreciates the ultimate insignificance of man. 
who at the beginning of the play was compared to a god in many ways. Hamlet contemplates how Alexander and Caesar, warriors of far greater uh, 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 greatness than his father, have also become uh, dust. Now, there's a question here, a very important question I raised in the classes. Is Hamlet an unloved child? Remember, Hamlet's relationship with his mom was artificial, awkward, and probably abusive. Remember how she didn't respect her husband, didn't respect her son. She remarried. She didn't give him the chance to become the king. She didn't even want him to, uh, uh, to be sad, to, to, to wear you know, black, to be mourning. When she said, it's common. And for that, Hamlet attacked her, insulted her, almost physically attacked her. And he said, I'll speak daggers to her, but use none. We've seen how he was rude to her. And the same thing could apply to his, his father. His father, there was no, Hamlet doesn't, the whole play doesn't show any kind of intimacy or love from those, like probably the mother, but this is a debatable issue. But the father, there was no mention. He was just always the fighter, the soldier, but not the father. Even when he came from behind the dead from the grave, he didn't express his love to Hamlet. He didn't say, Hamlet, I love you. You are the best uh, son in the world. He came to Hamlet to give him orders to kill somebody. What kind of father is this? What kind of mother is, is this? So there's the, usually this idea if Hamlet is an unloved child, because the moment this joker, this uh, clown is mentioned, Hamlet quickly remembers his childhood. So probably he spent his childhood with a stranger, with, uh, with an entertainer, with a fool, with a jester, rather than with his uh, uh, father and, and mother. Well, again, and find more evidence uh, and, and see if this Im impacted Hamlet's uh, decision to delay the, the revenge thing. So we have seen Hamlet, we have not seen Hamlet intimate with his uh, mother or father. He was tough on his mom, he insulted her, he accused her of being a whore. His father came from the dead and gave him uh, no expression of intimacy, gave him the order to kill uh, his uncle. But, but with Yorick, it seems that Hamlet is different. He remembers his happy childhood. He remembers how he was uh, carried on this man's uh, uh, back a thousand times. Uh, probably he, he had more fun with the, with the fool. Now we move to the burial of, of, of Ophelia. So she's, she's being given a burial, a Christian burial, because of the order of the king. So the grave digger was right. If had Ophelia been a commoner, she wouldn't have been buried this way because uh, we'll see how the priest is. There's doubt about, about her uh, death. But even the priest here is not give, going to give her full Christian burial. And then this makes Laertes angry. He, insult, he insults him. So we talk here about political and religious corruption. It's not something is rotten in the state of Denmark. It's actually everything is rotten in the, in the state of, of Denmark. We uh, discussed this last time. And I quoted this same, uh, this same, same thing about uh, Ophelia. Had she been a commoner, she wouldn't have received this special treatment. So the rich have privileges, the poor don't. Birth and wealth provide power and create their distinctions between the classes. The priest himself says, her death was doubtful. So probably I was very definite about this being a suicide last time, but I think perhaps it is a suicide, not 100%. And then he says, and but that great command or sways the order. If it hadn't been for the king, I wouldn't have given her this, this, uh, this Christian burial. So the political uh, corruption here of the king, uh, remember he didn't punish Hamlet, he sent him back. He actually came by killing a king. By, by, he sent Hamlet to England instead of punishing him, sending him to prison. Uh, and again, this lady, because he wants uh, the king wants uh, Laertes to side with, uh, by him, to fight with him. Uh, uh, the king is giving uh, privileges to uh, Ophelia who must have committed suicide. So, and, and again, the priest agrees with this. There's nothing wrong with that. He doesn't insist. Remember, because the king was on top of the, the chain of, of command, the chain of, uh, uh, of being. Uh, and again, 
this is how layer T is exchanges the insults. Uh, actually, he insults the, uh, uh, the the priest when he said it's doubtful. He didn't want to give her more uh, Christian uh, ceremonies, whatever. And he says, "Churlish priest, you are a rude, a horrible, uh, a ministering angel. Shall my sister be when thou liest howling? You like a dog. You just howl, and my sister is." is an angel. Now, Laertes at the grave is unaware that Hamlet was hiding. He insults Hamlet and accuses him of causing the, the insanity, here it says sanity, it should be insanity, and the death of, of Ophelia. Don't forget, it was, so Laertes here is like, oh, he's crying, he's sad, he's, he's very, very sad at the death of his, due to the death of his sister, but remember it was, he who first told her not to love uh, Hamlet, and because uh, he Hamlet is subject to his to his birth, uh, Laertes insults the uh, he he I don't know he loves his sister, but it doesn't sound like he really loves her. He insults the priest. Uh, he leaps into the grave, expresses her his love to to uh, to her. Remember when she was alive, there was no cozy relationship between uh, uh, both of them. And here he says, now when he jumps into the grave, leaps into the grave, now pile you dust upon the quick and dead. Quick here means alive, it's very interesting. Till of this flat a mountain you have made, make a mountain above me, bury me with my, with my sister. A fascinating expression, a very dramatic expression of love, a theatrical expression of love, something that Hamlet calls, uh, 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 em em uh, emphasis, something like he, he doesn't like this too much. Uh, he thinks that this man is being too, too dramatic. Uh, please say something, anybody, before I move to the next uh, part. One minute is left. But go on, no, no worries. If it, uh, uh, if it is disconnected, we can start again. Somebody wants to comment, but be very brief. Okay. Khalid is saying here, I read something that he was not mad about his father's death as much as he was mad at his mother's. For she promptly uh, married, indicating he loved his mother and he wants her to take care of him because I think this is realistic for kings and queens always possible. We, you can't trace this, but remember the queen prevented him from being, uh, from being the king. We'll see this. He could have been elected king, Hamlet. He 